Uh, it's accelerating neuroimaging research with BrainForge. Uh, it's presented, it's actually a pre recorded presentation uh, by Eric Werner. But I see Eric is on as well, so he'll hopefully be available for questions at the end. And uh, Mike, do you want to go ahead and play that? Hello, my name is Eric Werner. And I am from the Translational, the Center for Translational Research in Neuroimaging and Data Science, also known as TRENDS, here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm here to introduce BrainForge today, a web-based platform for neuroimaging research. BrainForge is a cloud-enabled web-based analysis platform for neuroimaging research. BrainForge allows you to archive data from your study, set up the analyses you want to run, and then process data across multiple modalities. When your results are finished, you can share them with other collaborators on, on the web. The reason we created BrainForge was for multiple reasons. They were divided into four main categories. Software issues, reproducibility issues, computational resource issues, and data sharing issues. Now the first is software issues. Neuroimaging pipelines are quite complicated, and they require lots of advanced um, lots of advanced software. Now, it's difficult for a beginning grad student or even a seasoned neuroimaging researcher to set up some of these soft these programs sometimes, especially on a on an environment controlled that they don't have administrative access on. It's it's also difficult because uh, not a lot of neuroimaging researchers are excellent programmers either, so they, they don't create code that's maintainable. Now this leads into reproducibility issues. Even if someone can create, um, write great code for to do a study that does what they need, a lot of times it's not maintainable. There will be hard-coded paths, or it'll be difficult to read, or there will be aspects about the about the environment that are not that are not encoded and not saved anywhere in the text. For instance, the version of software that the person ran or the operating system that they ran on. Now, this is difficult when maybe a year or two down the road, someone tries to replicate their analyses and is unable to. Next are computational resource issues. Now, neuroimaging data is quite vast. It could be maybe one, uh, maybe one terabyte for a study of 100 subjects, just in the original data, and then maybe 10 times that in derived data, once you have, once you have processed the data. Now, just storing the data is difficult, but also running it can be hard for many people. When you move up to thousands of subjects, which are needed to for an effect size of to capture a small effect sizes many people do not have the the resources to to run all the processing that is needed there are queues like exceed where it which in which you can run data for free but this is not easily but the queues are very long so it's not easy for researchers to do their research on time Furthermore, there's data sharing issues. Once someone has written their code and run their analysis, everything often stays on the, the file system or the hard drive that on which the analysis was, was originally run. Now, data sharing, then if someone wants to if someone wants to find this analysis, they have to have access to the local file system. Now this is it makes this is very hard when you want to share your results with other researchers. On BraidForge, we tackle all of these issues. Our software uses pipelines that are that have been run and tested in many published studies by uh, Dr. Calhoun and many other researchers at Trends. And these are all encapsulated inside of Docker and Singularity containers, which essentially which use all of the, um, encapsulate all of the, the operating system and software libraries and, and scripts 
needed to run the analyses that researchers actually have to run. So it saves a great deal of time for researchers who want to pre-process and analyze their subjects. Additionally, the use of Docker containers lends itself to much better reproducibility. Containerization means that you have the exact software library and the operating system for uh, all within one file, the, the Docker container. And then if someone else wants to run it, they're able to, they can just take that container and run it on their own files. Furthermore, we keep track of the, the provenance, the parameters used, and the and we store in the database the, the file and all of the associated metadata that was used for an analysis. At Trends, we have great computational resources. We utilize the HPC, the High Performance Computing Cluster at GSU, and can tap into Amazon Web Services to run, to, to run analyses. Furthermore, with our web interface, we're able, to, we're able to easily share results with other researchers outside of our own lab. Here's an overview of our architecture. Um, you can see on the left is the COINS architecture. COINS is another product, uh, another study management product that Trends has created about 10 years ago and is still using today. We have um, BrainForge integrates with Trends and pulls data collected by COINS so that uh, the, the data can be processed inside of BrainForge. BrainForge has both uh, separate front end and back end code bases and uses a Postgres database. We use Slurm as the, as the executor on our HPC to run many analyses at once. And here's an overview of the computational resources we have at Trends. We have 49 servers over almost 2,500 cores almost 30, 40 terabytes of memory among all of these servers, and 60 graphical processing units. We also have 1.5 petabytes of network storage and can tap into unlimited AWS resources. Now here's an overview of the analyses that we can run on BrainForge. We can run analyses in neuroimaging pre-processing, we can run linear models using statistical parametric, the statistical parametric mapping toolbox. We can run analyses in GIFT, the group ICA for fMRI toolbox, which is another product of the Calhoun lab. Furthermore, we can do statistical modeling with regression and classification. Here's a, a screenshot of the BrainForge UI. This is the pre-processing summary. BrainForge allows you to select um, within, an, within, a, within a study, you'll have many subjects. Then each subject will have one or more sessions, and which is just a, a, a period of time that someone went to go get scanned in an MRI scanner. And then within those sessions, you'll have multiple acquisitions or series say a, a structural acquisition, a, a functional MRI acquisition, or a diffusion image. What BrainForge allows you to do is associate each one of those, um, each one of those series with a different pipeline and set of parameters and allows you to, then you can queue them up and run them for every subject in your study. Now you can see for this analysis that we have or for this study, we have VBM, voxel-based morphometry, which is a structural MRI analysis, queued up for all of the T1W 32-channel NPR one millimeter series. And then below that, you're able to see the total number of, of sessions that have been completed. And on each line below that gives you another subject and session. So you can see that, say for the top subject, that analysis has been set up but not run. The next one below had an error, and the one below that was completed. Then you can see the total number of completed, 107 out of 261. We also have we also support bids, which is the dominant standard for data data set um, dominant data set specification 
for neuroimaging data. And here's an overview of all the processing we do. We can do VBM, we can do um, functional MRI using two different libraries. We can do arterial spin labeling, diffusion tensor imaging and diffusion kurtosis imaging using FSL, which is good for um, finding connectivity um, con or yeah, connectivity between uh, different regions of the brain. Then here's all the here's all the toolbar or all the analyses we do with GIFT. That includes Group ICA, DFNC, and Mancova. Also Free Surfer and general linear models using SPM. Here's an overview of voxel-based morphometry. You can see the images at different steps of processing and in different tissue types. Here's fMRI pre-processing. You can see the mean image at various states of, of pre-processing. We also do FreeSurfer, which does a parcellation of the brain and can do a regression analysis across many subjects after the initial pre-processing is done. Here's arterial spin labeling, which also shows you a 3D view of the, of the processing results. And here's diffusion tensor imaging which shows you movement correction over time and the frac fractional anisotropy images registered to a standard space. Do the GIFT analyses, including 17 variants of group independent of component analysis. GIFT is one of the two major FM, um, group ICA toolboxes in use today. Here's an example of group ICA. Here's the, the montage plots, time courses, and spectra for each component. Here's SPM GLM. You can see the parts of the brain that are associated with a task and the design matrix. In the future, we're going to do MRI QC and MEG pipeline, historical QA view, allow users to run their own analyses and further develop our command line interface. We're also going to do Jupyter notebooks to let users do interactive analyses. Furthermore, we have a NeuroMark portal, which will allow people to do normative comparisons of their data against a reference data set of thousands of images. This includes a brain age calculation. And if you want to learn more, please contact me. Uh, email me at everner at gsu.edu or um, find me on Twitter. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay, great. Eric, I think I see you on. Um, I don't know if you want to unmute yourself. There we go. Hey, uh, and encourage everybody. Hey, Eric. Um, we've got a first question is, is the trend gateway based on any existing gateway platform framework or did you guys write your own? No, we just wrote our own from um, just software development libraries. So the backend is based on the Django, uh, the backend is written with the Django REST framework and the front end is written with React using the Ant um, UI framework. So no, we didn't, we kind of wrote it from scratch to a large extent. Okay. Um, I'll ask one more quick question and that's, uh, you, you mentioned reproducibility is one of the important goals and, and okay. I heard you mention that you can share the data at any stage in the pipeline, but what about the actual containers that have the workflows? You know, how, if somebody wants to reproduce and, and look at those, are those shareable? You know, what happens when you update those? Can you talk a little bit about reproducibility of that aspect of it? Yeah, sure. The, um, okay, so for right now, the containers themselves are, are being held privately on Docker Hub. Um, we're probably going to open source them and share them, but we, we haven't pulled the trigger on that yet. Um, so we're, uh, so yeah, for, for people who have used our service and who are paying customers or who are, who are have just, um, I guess, sorry, the more, more accurately, people who have used, the u people who are users who've run their data with our platform, well, we can share them, we can share those containers with them. And then they can, um, then they can run them. They can see what's going on, introspect them, and whatnot. Um, 
So the, in terms of like reproducibility and maintainability, um, it's, it gets pretty, um, I guess it gets pretty hairy <laughs> um, because what you have to do is, um, you know, you have to, you have to navigate your way through different, um, different versions like patches, minor releases and major releases that, that break past functionality. So um, every time you change the interface, right, you have to um, you have to change the front end code and the back end code, um, and so you have to so you have to create like uh, so you have to find a way to to do that in a way that's um, you can maintain the old stuff in case people want to rerun it, and you also want to maintain the um, and you also do, you want to um, you want people to be able to select from different versions of the of an analysis, and so we're we're just kind of putting together the the plans for that um, in a very like fine grained way, and uh, we'll be we'll be doing that soon. But um, currently, we just don't have um, we we are still relatively new, so we're we're mostly start we we haven't really had that many revisions on our on our images that run the analyses. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Let, let, hopefully you'll stick around for the general Q&A, but let's move on to our third presentation.